Hello everyone, welcome back for the last installment of this tutorial. We're ready to finalize this image completely through Photoshop. So here we have the skyline photo loaded up in Photoshop. It's looking really plain, really boring, really dull, no contrast, which is not how I like my photos to look at all. So we've got some work to do, but it's going to be really easy, pretty simple. Uh, my basic thought process when I first open this up is what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to be using the curves tool. But I want to apply different curves adjustments to different parts of the image. So if you look down here, we can kind of break this image up into four different sections. We've got this rocks, we've got the river and the reflections, we've got the buildings and the land, and then we've got the sky. So we're going to kind of break it up into four different sections and we're going to work on in each of those sections at a time. All right, so let's do, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and separate the sky from the buildings. That's going to be the hardest mask. Now, I do have a plugin that I use. Uh, this is the only plugin that I, I use in any of my processing, but it's Topaz's Remask, and it makes masking out that, uh, separating the sky from the buildings really easy and really fast. So let's go ahead and do that. Topaz Remask. All right, and all you're going to do in Topaz Remask is you've got the blue, which is the selection tool, and you just trace around what we want to separate. And I'm going to do this kind of fast because this really can take a while, but uh, we're going to try to get this done in a decent amount of time. So let's just go ahead and trace. And there are other ways to do these uh, masking. It just takes a little longer. If you don't have Topaz Remask, you're certainly capable of doing that. That mask is just going to take you a little bit longer. So I'm going to separate the sky from the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and use the red paint bucket down here. And that's what's going to be erased. And up here, which is green, is what we're going to keep. So that's all you do. You trace along there and you say compute the mask. And you see that it's pretty good. The black is showing you what's cut out, the white is showing you what's there, and you can switch over and say, you know, this is showing you what you're keeping and what you're cutting out. Now there's some things that you gotta just grab the brushes here and you can zoom in and we're going to just kinda and see how it just it, it'll automatically calculate. You don't have to you don't have to uh, brush over everything. So if you just kind of go on the edges there. And I am just kind of going a little faster than I would normally go. So once you get all the sky, that's going to be cut. Now you see you've got some white areas here uh, in the building. So I'm going to go back out and I'm going to grab this, the cut tool and kind of fill these areas in. And you see how it just kind of goes back in. could go quite a bit longer and get more detailed in each of these little areas but for the purposes of this tutorial we're going to move it along so then you can just say okay now you see what it's done right here is it's given you a layer of that's just the sky okay so we can let's go in here 
<clears throat> and let's add a curves adjustment layer for the buildings. Let's go ahead and start with the buildings. So in between these two, we'll come down here and we'll say new layer curves. Now see it's given us a curves layer in between the sky and the building. All right. Let's do if you clicking on this layer, you can do control I and it colors it all in black. So that means right now that curves layer is not affecting anything. So we're going to grab a white brush. We're going to make sure that we're painting white onto the mask. Okay. And we're going to paint just the buildings. So you just you're just tracing over the buildings and you can see right here what we're doing is it's white where we're painting. So that means the the mask is going to affect those areas. And if you hit the back, uh, the backslash button, you can see it's all red, which means it's none of it's being effective except for where you're painting white. So you can see how we're kind of revealing the buildings here. And you don't have to worry about getting into the sky because we've got that layer of the original sky right on top. See that? So now the curves layer is affecting only, only the buildings. And if you go over some, you can just grab the black brush and come back down, and just kind of do that. Okay. Now hit the backslash again, and it takes off the just the red shaded area. But now you can see the this is the histogram for just the area that we're going to affect. So you can see it needs uh, needs some shadows. The highlights are okay. But if you start pulling it down, just click a point here on your graph and pull down, and you can see how we're only affecting the buildings. See that? So let's put it down somewhere, somewhere down there. And the thing is, we can always come back. See that we can lighten them up too. And you can you can always come up and re readjust them a little later if you wanted. So there we go. There's our mask on the buildings. Now let's do another one for the river. So let's click on a new layer and do we're going to do another curves tool. Again we're going to hit control I and that shades the whole thing in. Now let's grab a white brush and let's paint on just the river. hit the backslash and you can see where we're painting. So anything that the the red is going to be blocked. And anything that's revealed is what we're going to be affecting with this curves layer. Backslash again, and this shows you the histogram for just for just the river. Now you can see here we need some highlights and we need some shadows. It needs a lot of contrast, basically. <coughs> so we can do the same thing we did before. Let's click a point for the shadows, and we can drag it down to increase the shadows. And we can click a point up here and drag up to increase the highlights. Now check that out. Quite a bit of contrast was added, and you can see that when you when you add contrast, it also adds the color. You know, it just naturally will increase the color, and that's looking pretty good. I'll tell you what else we can do. Let's do another curves adjustment layer. Let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. You can do Control J, and we're going to duplicate it. Let's get rid of these. Right, so now, right now, this curves layer is not affecting anything, but I've already got the mask still. So we're still only going to affect the river. And let's drag this down. And if you do this drop-down box, the RGB, pick just the reds. You see how you can kind of tone just the river. So you can kind of add a little bit of a little more pinks in there. Let's see what we want to do with the blues. See that? Now that's kind of cool looking. Alright. 
so we're able to use the curves tool to add contrast it increased the saturation and we've been able to tone it a little bit now and if you think it's too much you can drag your opacity and kind of slide it down okay so so far all we have is curves adjustments let's do another one a new layer a new curves layer control I again and grab a white brush and this time we're going to paint out the rocks so we're going to do a curves adjustment just for these rocks backslash okay backslash again and now you can see we need a lot of light on these rocks we're gonna add a lot of contrast we can just take this and sl slide it over here okay don't want to go fast if you go past where the starts see it starts getting a little blown out and there he is so just take it somewhere over here and then drag this way down So you see we've added two points. We just well we just drag one point over and then we added this point to bring down on the shadows. Now look at the difference of those rocks there. See that? And that's just the curves tool there. Alright. Let's do one more curves. Uh, let's look at the sky. This time we're going to click on this layer because this is just our sky layer. Let's add a new curves adjustment right click on it and say create a clipping mask and all that means is that that curves layer is only going to affect the layer that's below it so it's only going to affect our sky layer because we want to we we don't want to do another curves for all of this the river and the buildings that we've already done so we want it to affect just this sky so you can see here we need a lot of shadows up here so look what happens when you start pulling it. Now see again, you can take it to the extreme just to see what you're doing. So, you know, pull it somewhere down here. You want to be careful with the highlights because it is pretty bright right in here. And if you start taking the highlights up, you're going to kind of blow it out in that area. So I'm going to keep that down a little bit. You see the difference right there? And again, you see how much color we got out of doing that. We haven't actually increased saturation at all in this. We haven't had a saturation layer or anything like that. So we've been able to to bring the color out just by doing contrast adjustments with the curves tool. All right, let's do another one just like we did with the water. Let's do another curves. Right click, create a clipping mask, and this time again, drag it down to say the reds and let's we can kind of do an adjustment just on the reds or the blues. And you see how it gives us a little bit of better maroon tones or magenta tones up in that sky. See that? It kind of made our blues bluer and a little bit more purple than than that pinkish orange that was over there. So that's pretty cool. Another another adjustment that I like to do that I do on nearly all of the HDR that I do is a color balance. And that's because when the photos come out of Photomatix, Photomatix seems to tend to add a lot of red or orange in the shadows. So what I'll end up doing is I'll do a color balance adjustment layer right there. And in the shadows, you can see in this color balance, you can affect the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. Well, let's just do the shadows for right now. And you can see what you can do is you can sl slide it all the way over, but see how it only affects parts of the image? It's only affecting the shadows or the darkness. So I usually don't adjust it much. I usually do it somewhere about minus 5. And then I add 5 down there. So you see how that added? It just kind of gave a little bit... Like look right here on the buildings in particular. When you add that in there, it just kind of gives it a nice little darker tone in the shadows rather than that orangish tone. And then another thing you can do is the highlights. You know, maybe increase the color in the highlights a little bit. Again, go easy on these. Don't if you start going overboard, it starts looking a little a little wild. But and that's it right there. That's pretty close to what I got. Kind of liking how it's looking.
Uh, some other things that you can do if you really wanted to spend a little more time is all of these uh, twigs and coming up here we can try and clone those out or even the power lines man these power lines in the Nashville skyline uh, just get in the way every single time I wish they'd take them down or something they really mess up photographers don't they I'm gonna go ahead and leave them in this time though and I think we've pretty close to having a completed image I like how it's turned out and you see that with the processing we did in Photomatics, if you haven't watched those, go back and check it out. But the processing we did there, you see we don't even need noise reduction. The sky looks really good. We don't need noise reduction. We don't have halos. We don't have any of that weird looking stuff. But this is definitely an, uh, an HDR image full of color, full of contrast. And we've now got the complete image. So. Easy steps, check out the Curves tool. If, you, if you're unfamiliar with the Curves, I strongly suggest you figure it out. Uh, there's plenty of places to look. We've even got a 30 second video that explains Curves in 30 seconds. I think it would be helpful. But just uh, add some Curves layers in it and uh, use masking and apply different Curves at different parts of the image. And uh, It's a very powerful tool, a lot that you can do with it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please send me an email or leave a comment, and I'll be sure to answer anything I can. Uh, keep checking back. We're going to add new content all the time. We'll have new tutorials. We'll have a new image uh, coming up soon. So check them out.